Welcome to Think Before You Code. I'm excited to dive into the intricacies of Rust's statically typed and highly expressive type system with you all today. First off, what is a type system and why do we care about it? Simply put, a type system is a set of rules that a programming language uses to ensure that values have a predictable and consistent behavior. In Rust, the type system is used to catch bugs at compile time rather than runtime, which can save you a lot of time and frustration when it comes to debugging your code. Now, let's talk about some of the key features of the Rust type system. One of the most prominent features of Rust's type system is its strictness. In Rust, every value has a clear and well-defined type, and there is no implicit type coercion. This means that if you try to use a value of one type in a context where a different type is expected, the compiler will give you an error. For example, In this code snippet, we have a variable x of type i32, and we are trying to assign it to a variable y of type f64. However, Rust will not implicitly convert the value of x from an i32 to an f64, so the compiler will give us an error. This strictness may seem a bit daunting at first, but it ultimately leads to safer and more predictable code. It forces you to be explicit about your intentions and helps prevent sneaky bugs that can be hard to track down. Another key feature of the Rust type system is its support for generics. Generics allow you to write code that can work with multiple types in a type safe way. This is particularly useful when it comes to data structures like arrays and linked lists where you may want to store values of different types. For example, Here, we have a linked list data structure that can hold values of any type T. This allows us to create a linked list of integers, strings, or any other type we want. In addition to generics, Rust also has a powerful trait system that allows you to define shared behavior for types. Traits are similar to interfaces in other languages and allow you to define a set of methods that a type must implement. For example, In this code snippet, we have defined a clonable trait with a single method, clone. We have also implemented this trait for the i32 type, providing an implementation of the clone method. This allows us to use the clone method on i32 values, like so. One final aspect of the Rust type system that I'd like to mention is the concept of ownership. In Rust, Every value has a single owner, and that owner is responsible for releasing the resources associated with that value when it is no longer needed. This helps prevent common problems like null or dangling pointers, which can be difficult to track down and debug in other languages. For example, In this code snippet, we have a string s that is created and owned by the main function. We pass this string to the takes ownership function, which becomes the owner of the string. Once the string is passed to the function, it is no longer valid in the main function, as ownership has been transferred. The concept of ownership may seem a bit confusing at first, but it ultimately leads to safer and more predictable code. It helps ensure that resources are released when they are no longer needed, which can be particularly important in systems programming where resources are limited. So there you have it, a brief overview of the Rust type system and its features, including strictness, generics, traits, and ownership. I hope you found this overview helpful and that it gave you a greater appreciation for the power and expressiveness of the Rust type system.